Caleb Russell is trying to become the first rider to win five straight Grand National Cross Country Championships. But in many ways, this has been his most challenging season yet, as the number one has faced tough tracks and tough competition. But he's still in position to get it done. Will we see history today? GNCC is next. Take me home, Country Roads. It's the Rocky Mountain ATVMC Mountaineer Run in West Virginia. Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Maxis and AMA National Championship. I'm Jason Wigand, your host for surveying the very difficult woods of the Mountaineer State. For what should be a great race, here's your Amsoil recap of our previous round in upstate New York, the famous Unadilla. Known best for its motocross track, but the woods are pretty darn tough. Ricky Russell out to the early lead. Russell Bobbitt, Ryan Sipes, Jordan Ashburn, Caleb Russell all there. Chaos ensued on this FMF PowerPoint, a nearly vertical hill line with rocks. Caleb Russell and Ricky Russell battling for the lead. They get stuck. Ashburn and Sipes sneak through. Ricky Russell, with the help of some fans, would have to push his bike to the top. That surely took a lot of the wind out of his sails. Sipes and Caleb Russell battling for the lead. Caleb Russell would get it. But watch Jordan Ashburn here. He had a different pit strategy, and that would allow him to temporarily take the lead. Then Ricky Russell and Caleb Russell would get him back. Late in the race, Caleb Russell pulls away, and this is big for a few reasons. In the championship, his primary title rival, Thad Duval, now out with a wrist injury incurred at the International Six Days Enduro riding for Team USA in Europe. So championship front looks good for Caleb. But more importantly, this win now puts him within one of tying Scott Summers' all-time mark of GNCC bike overall victory. Stu Baylor, by the way, a good run through traffic to finish second at Unadilla. Here are your Rocky Mountain ATV MC results. Ricky Russell holds on for a podium. Sipes, disappointed, drops back to 10th. Here's Caleb trying to tie some history. Yeah, obviously, to, um, to get win number 46 and tie the all-time record, um, It'd be pretty huge. I mean, it's it's been there for a long time, and uh, Scott's you know been around for forever, and uh, is a true off-road legend. So, um, to be in the company up at the top of the list is really cool. And um, yeah, it's like I've said it before. I mean, it's not ever anything I set out to do. It's just the nature of the beast and uh, my you know the drive to, to to keep winning. And once you get a little taste of it, you know it's that's all you kind of crave. So, so the Mountaineer run. Some history on the line, but a lot of great riders on the line also. And Ricky Russell, the traditional lightning quick start on that Yamaha. He's going to lead them into turn one. Can he control it? All balls racing, hole shot going to him. Mason Atherton getting in there on that yellow machine, but it's Russell, Caleb Russell on the outside. Sipes is going to finally control it. So that is a big battle off the start. And we will go back to the start for our XC2. 250 class, young riders like Lane Michael getting ready to go. Michael, tough season early this year, but came back to win our last race. You know, it's uh, it's been a tough year for me uh, mentally, but I feel like, um, you know, right now I'm, you know, riding really well, and obviously last race went good, so uh, definitely just want to go out, uh, ride to my potential these last three, and, uh, you know, whatever happens, happens. I mean, I just want to go out, do the best I can, uh, not give up, and uh, we'll see where we end up. Lined up next to him on that Yamaha with the white background. Josh Tote, the championship leader in the series. They're both going to get edged out, though. No, Michael comes back. He's going to steal that whole shot award. Working his way down to the inside. Tote right behind him. So a great battle between you two young guns in this series. Toth won eight out of the first nine events this year. So that's how big it was for Michael to get that win at the last one. And we have one other pro class, the XC3 for 125s, new this year, but an old favorite, Jason Thomas, giving in a run and looking to lock up the title this year. Uh, yeah, today I should uh, wrap up the championship. Uh, it's pretty much uh, just got to finish in front of Hunter, and it's a, it's a done deal. So, uh, yeah, just ride steady and, uh, and think about that and, you know, just uh, bring it home.
And this FMF XC3 class, really cool to get the 125s back in the game at the very highest levels. And the man out of Wales, Jason Thomas, looking to wrap up that title. He's not the only veteran out there. Paul Wibley, two-time GNCC champ of the XC1, the premier division, back with us, riding the YZ125, while also coaching and training the Ampro Yamaha riders like Ricky Russell during the week. So a great mix of young up-and-coming riders and some veterans making the 125s work. Really fun to hear them wind out those 125 two-strokes. The big four-strokes, 350s, a pair of them. Ryan Sipes, Coastal Racing, Husqvarna. Caleb Russell, FMF, KTM, 1-2. There's Ricky Russell in third. And Grant Baylor, who got the win two races ago in Ohio. Then it's Jordan Ashburn and the Beta. The five, Trevor Bollinger, last year's champion of the XC2 class. A lot of riders trying to stop Caleb Russell from winning today. When it comes to guarding your diesel engine, Amsoil offers the next level performance you demand. Amsoil Signature Series diesel oils provide six times more wear protection than required by a leading diesel engine manufacturer. Give your hardworking truck the protection it deserves. Amsoil, devoted to protection. See the whole line of diesel products at amsoil.com slash diesel. As riders and racers, we understand the need to get quality parts, apparel, and accessories fast. We have the horsepower of multiple warehouses to make sure your gear, OEM parts, or accessories make it to your door quickly. Check out our easy-to-use website and experience customer service that takes the whole shot. RockyMountainHVMC.com. Get ready. Here he is. Walker Fowler, Brent National Cross Country, XC1 Pro Class Champion. GNCC Series on the NBC Sports Network is brought to you by Amsoil. Protect your weekend. Rocky Mountain ATVMC, get ready. And by Max's Tires, keeps you riding to your maximum potential. Been covering this 125 class today. We got Taylor Jones, our women's champ, gonna battle the boys today. Uh, yeah, we're out here at the mountain and I wrapped up the WXC a couple weekends ago, so I decided I'd try out the 125 FMF XC3 class and give the boys a run for their money. I'm really just out here to have a lot of fun, but um, I'd, I'd like to get a top five and hopefully who knows what happens, like anything can happen in that class and maybe I'll end up on the podium. We'll just see how it goes and just have a lot of fun. Jones won nine of the first 10 races in the women's class this year, the Australian clinching that title, and was running seventh at the end of lap one against the men in the XC3 division. We're watching Ryan Sipes leading this race overall, though, in the XC1 Pro class. Sipes, former superstar of motocross and supercross, got a couple of 125 or 250 F supercross wins in his career, made the move over to off-road four seasons ago. It has been quite the journey for him. He's shown speed at times, became the first American to ever win the international six days enduro two years ago. But in these three hour American cross country races, Caleb Russell and others have been able to get the drop on him. He's yet to get one of the wins. It's not like Sipes isn't in shape or isn't fast, but there is so much strategy when you race for three hours on this type of terrain. And I think it's gotten a little frustrating at times for Ryan. I've talked to him quite a bit about the transition and. Sometimes he's putting his head against the wall, wondering what it's going to take to figure it out. But so far, so good today. Trevor Bollinger, the rookie, putting in one of his best runs of the season, leading Ricky Russell. He's running third right now on that Honda. Here comes Grant Baylor and the Cavalry. Stu Baylor, Grant's older brother, right behind him. And Jordan Ashburn on the Beta coming through next in seventh. So that's a tight pack trying to get near that top five. So let's see what Sipes 
fun-loving guy out of Kentucky. He's a family man now, and one of the main reasons he wanted to come race GNCC is that he can stay back east and be a good dad to his kids. Supercross really got to base yourself out of California for at least more than half the year, if not all 12 months. And he wanted to stay close to home, and he has found a home in the woods, and he looks comfortable there today, pulling away a bit from Caleb early, and Bollinger, this is what we've been waiting for as he transitions to the 450s this year. Does he have the stuff to run with the likes of Sipes and Russell? And today he does. You see him lurking back there. Earn that number five overall in the series while racing on a 250 in the XC2 class last year. But oddly, some of his overall results on the 250 a year ago were better than what he's put in on the 450 this year. That's the difference between starting with these guys on row one and having to play the game on their terms. The second row start, it can almost be an advantage sometimes because you really don't know where you stand. The riders just keep their head down and keep charging. Ricky Russell coming by here, he will tell you the same thing. There's a lot to learn on how to actually win these races, especially against experienced hands like Caleb Russell since he's won 45 of these events in his career. Not bad for a 27-year-old. There's Bollinger giving him a run. Bollinger, a bunch of fourths and fifths this year, but is yet to get up on that overall podium. Look at Sipes hustling downhill. And he's built up a nice lead on Caleb Russell right now. So we'll check back in with fifth place, Stu Baylor, on the SRT KTM. He's the one that started the year in spectacular fashion. He won the opener. Baylor came into this sport with a lot of promise in the youth and amateur ranks. He won a national enduro title a few years ago as a relatively young rider, as a teenager, but a major wrist injury that he had to ride through that year to win the title has really set him back. And Stu has had a bit of a rejuvenated effort here in 2017. The target for all these riders, the number one, Caleb Russell, second right now, but has some ground to make up on Sipes. And Bollinger trying to keep Russell in his sights. He tries to make that top three run today. Ricky Russell on the NFAB Ampro Yamaha. Got some fans cheering for him down there. Woo! Bike steps sideways. Sipes motoring through. We know he has the speed. Can he put all the puzzle pieces together and win his first one today? GNCC is Old Eagles, 50 Cal, Cowboy Boots, Diesel Trucks, Copenhagen, Bush Light kind of men. Evans Waterless Coolant is the solution to boiling over. So you can push your vehicle like this, and this, and this, without fearing the temperature gauge. Evans Waterless Coolant, defeat the heat. Hey guys, uh, I'm Tim Geiser, riding for Honda Garibaldi Racing Team, and uh, we are using Evans Cooling, and you know, like, I know that when, when I use that uh, products, uh, I know that my bike never will overheat, so uh, I'm really happy with it. Are you looking for a dirt bike piston that can increase power and decrease blow-by? Then check out Wiseco's all-new Racer Elite Piston Line. Racer Elite has been used exclusively by the pros, including RCA, Yoshimura, Suzuki Factory Racing, and are now accessible to the public. Available for popular 250 and 450cc dirt bikes, the Racer Elite Series is the first off-the-shelf asymmetrical power sports piston ever made. Its fully machined billet aluminum construction features an exclusive custom lap top ring. Step up with dyno-proven power gains with Wiseco's Racer Elite Piston Line. Ryan Sipes was once a Supercross race winner. He's come a long way to have to ride on this type of terrain through the rocks, the trees, and the mountains of the Mountaineer Run Grand National Cross Country event. But he's holding his own. Caleb Russell putting in a couple of charges, made up ground here and there, but not quite in striking distance. So best run we've seen in a while for Sipes, who has told me recently 
He's trying to change his strategy in these races. Not going to let the race come to him anymore. He's going to try to blitz it here at the start. Obviously not right over his head, but he wants to charge early, and we're seeing it right now. Of course, what makes these races so difficult, you're racing for three hours on this terrain, and all the good things you do at the beginning can be wiped out. You put one wheel wrong on one of these rocks, and that lead you build up is gone. But so far, Sipes has weathered the storm. A couple of attempts to close the gap by Caleb Russell, and it has not happened. Russell's still back there in second. Whoa, and he makes the mistake. So your champion is down, and this is really going to benefit Sipes. And Trevor Bollinger, the young man out of North Carolina, who's been charging hard all day, is still in contention for that top three. Although Ricky Russell not letting him have it easy. Man, this rock section so treacherous. And we'll show you what happened to Caleb Russell in slow-mo. You really get an appreciation for the balance and how precise these guys have to be to put the tires in the exact spot they want. The whole time, he's trying to put that front wheel where he wants it. And this tree almost gets off balance. Momentarily, he gets to the right side of the bike and look, pops right back up to the center to try to balance it. But man, rocks and tree roots are like riding on ice at times. And if you hit those things at any bit of an angle, if you don't hit them square on, well, you can see exactly what happens. So Russell makes the mistake, Sipes taking advantage. We had a chance to talk to the Kentucky boy earlier about his chances today. I'd say this year I've just been, um, it's been tough. It's been inconsistent. I've been on the box a few times. I've been uh, off, uh, far away from the box a few times. A um, couple little nagging injuries and some things. And uh, some, some people say I'm getting old, but I don't know what it is. Maybe that's it, but uh, I'm just trying, working every day to try to be back, you know, on the box and back up where I feel like I belong. And that work is paying off right now as Sipes leads it past the halfway point here in West Virginia. And this would be big if he could get the win. That'd be five different winners this year. Been a while since we've had that kind of variety. And look at Bollinger. This is exactly the way you want to see a young kid build it up. Some consistent runs to begin the season. Nothing very flashy or spectacular. But now he's starting to try to get to the next level. I mean, you can challenge your defending champ, Caleb Russell. You're learning some valuable lessons. Ricky Russell, he got his first win of his GNCC career at the snowshoe event at the ski resort in West Virginia. All these kids are learning. Toth is now back in the lead in XC2. But Lane Michael right there, the battle we were hoping to see has materialized, and it is a good one. And Craig DeLong, coastal racing teammate of Lane Michael is third. Stu Baylor still holding down fifth in XC1 on the big 450. Wow, and he absolutely motored through that rock garden. And let's check back in with the Australian, Tyla Jones. Good job, girl. Sixth place now against the boys in the 125 FMF XC3 class. Ryan Sipes continues to lead the race overall. Lap traffic now. Not a ton yet, but it'll get worse. And he has just been so relaxed and smooth today. You can tell he's pushing the pace, but nothing out of control. Did lose that front number plate. And there was a bit of a problem in the pits, actually, we hear when he was gassing up. And that cost him a bit of his lead. So another opportunity for Caleb Russell to try to run him down. Man, but he cannot shake Trevor Bollinger. Good job of the Johnny Campbell Racing factory Honda rider. And it's great to see Honda out here not only supporting the racing, but using this series to help develop that 450 RX line of closed course off-road bikes. Putting that thing through its paces today. Oh, and another mistake for Caleb Russell. And Trevor Bollinger is going to get by him. No, Caleb immediately gets on the bike and cuts him off. So we have a battle on our hands for second. Same thing. Got to get that front tire square. It just hit the side of that rock, and he goes down. And look how close his head came to hitting one of those rocks. 
I know when you see these riders come to this section, they're not wide open bouncing off the rev limiter, but when you see how quickly things can go wrong, you get a real appreciation for how hard they are pushing in these types of conditions. You can only go as fast as the terrain allows you to. And to try to up the pace and run someone down, well, things can change in a hurry. And that's the type of stuff that has undone Sipes before, but he is keeping it calm and cool, collected, and for Sipes to win it today would be especially impressive because this is a really technical track. This is an off-roaders track. It's not a high-speed motocross type terrain and layout. So he is showing just how much he has learned about the off-road game over the last four seasons. Oh, and Russell almost went down again. He looks to have shaken Bollinger, but any of the ground he made up when Sipes had the problem with the gas can and the pits. He has lost that and more. Let's check back in with third. And Trevor is still back there. Now, by the way, we're racing today without Thad Duvall. That was Caleb Russell's closest challenger in the series standings, but a wrist injury has taken Duvall out of the last two rounds. So the door is open for some new winners and new podium contenders. The kids are learning and gaining confidence today. Are you looking for a dirt bike piston that can increase power and decrease blow-by? Then check out Wiseco's all-new Racer Elite Piston Line. Racer Elite has been used exclusively by the pros, including RCA, Yoshimura, Suzuki Factory Racing, and are now accessible to the public. Available for popular 250 and 450cc dirt bikes, the Racer Elite Series is the first off-the-shelf asymmetrical power sports piston ever made. Its fully machined billet aluminum construction features an exclusive custom lap top ring. Step up with dyno-proven power gains with Wiseco's Racer Elite Piston Line. We handle your races, your jumps, and your trails. Isn't it time you give your daily driver the same love? Amsoil Signature Series Synthetic Motor Oil delivers 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by a leading industry standard. Amsoil also offers a full family of ATV UTV lubricants, giving you above and beyond fortification for your weekday and weekend vehicles. Amsoil, devoted to protection. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. The all-new from the ground up 2018 Yamaha YZ450F is now available at Lojack Cycle Sales. With over 40 years of experience in motorcycle sales and service and 15 national championships, we know racing. So stop by Lojack Cycle Sales today in Torrento, Pennsylvania and visit our online inventory at www.lojack.com. Yamaha YZ, it's why we ride. Over the river and through the woods, the newest Polaris models are here for the holidays. Take home great deals on the world's best-selling side-by-sides and ATVs during the Polaris Holiday Sales Event. The GNCC Series on the NBC Sports Network is brought to you by Amsoil. Protect your weekend. Rocky Mountain ATVMC, get ready. And by Maxxis Tires, keeps you riding to your maximum potential. Hey, we'll race anything here in the Grand National Cross Country Series. Last night, a bunch of the campers held a hot dog competition, set up a little course. Obviously difficult on both the athletes and the dogs. And if you haven't hung out at one of these races, some of the most dog-friendly events you can go to. So much fun off the track when you come to a Grand National Cross Country event. But it is serious business right now for Ryan Sipes, a personal journey to learn and master the off-road game Today could be the day he has led every lap and avoided the big mistake. And I'll tell you what, he's not getting tired either. This FMF PowerPoint, the rock garden here, has led to the undoing of many riders. So it's good to see the motocross and supercross convert actually being one of the best through this very difficult section. Caleb Russell here in second, not able to close the gap. And earlier he had his problems. This is his second big crash of the day. And again, watch his head. And the shoulder actually could have come down on that rock. And that's how quickly things can change. And I've got to wonder with the big points lead now, if maybe some of the wind is not out of the sails of Caleb Russell. So it is Ryan Sipes' race to win or lose. I don't know if Russell's gonna go all out and take huge risks to try to catch him. But that doesn't mean that Sipes is immune to that type of mistake and couldn't hand it back over. 
Caleb's not going to completely give up. He's going to keep running his pace. So Sipes can't let the pressure get to him on this last lap. And what a breakthrough it would be. And there it is. There's Ryan Sipes' crew and family. That's his boy there cheering him on. And they are waiting very impatiently to see him in sight. They can already see the checkered flag, and now they can see him. A long journey from the stadiums of Supercross to the woods here in West Virginia, and he's finally graduated to the top. Ryan Sipes is going to win the Mountaineer Run TNCC. And here are your results. Russell second. Ricky Russell takes third. Oh, Trevor Bollinger had a great day and ends up back in sixth. Here's the winner. Oh, man. It's pretty amazing. It's relieving. Been trying a long time, four years for this. And it's been such an up and down year. I've been really frustrated, and then some parts have been good. So I finally, I kind of just told myself, I'm deciding I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. You know, whatever that means, <laughs> it worked out. So I just kept my head down, just kept pushing, try to not think about anything but the track, you know, and uh, it worked out. Bike was good, and oh, I'm pumped. And you can hear the exhaustion in his voice. It is hard work to win one of these. Here's your Amsoil race recap. Ricky Russell, great start. He's going to get the whole shot award. Sipes is all the way on the outside of the yellow gear. Look at the corner speed here. I think this guy's done a lot of motocross in his time. Wedges his way into the inside of the next corner and moves up from fourth to first. And he had Caleb Russell, your four-time and defending series champ, behind him all day long. And he had problems in the pits. But Russell couldn't capitalize on this day. Crash here. And then another here. Couldn't get it going. And it opens the door for Sipes to get it done. Trevor Bollinger would actually try to pass Caleb for second. Caleb able to hold him at bay. And then Bollinger problems on the last lap would drop off of a podium position. But all the credit in the world to Ryan Sipes. He had to deal with the pressure. He had to deal with a track that might not have even lent itself to his strengths as a racer. And he gets the job done. Credit to him for never giving up on his dream of winning one of these and putting his name in the record books of Am's Oil Grand National Cross Country Racing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. I'm Jason Wygant here on Racer TV.